In this video, I would like to introduce the modern framework called gRPC that can be used to implement microservices. Before getting to know what is uh, gRPC, let us discuss about what is happening with microservices at present. Everyone knows the microservices are the most popular architecture pattern to build enterprise level applications. All these applications would have implemented using different programming languages like Java, Python, C Sharp, or might be mobile applications as well. And they want to communicate with each other. There should be some definitions of data format to exchange the data. And also each and every application must have the API to communicate with. But to implement these REST APIs, there are a lot of uh, things that needs to be considered. Implementing REST APIs involved in a lot of things. Data model definition like uh, JSON or XML, so which data format we have to choose, or the endpoints of the API, so how the endpoint should look like, so what is the pattern that we need to follow, and also API version, so if you implement the API, it might be upgraded to next version, so how to manage the versions of API. That's also another difficulty and error handling. So you should handle the errors that uh, occurs when accessing any API, the performance of the API and scalability of the API. So all these factors are very difficult to implement and even to load balance the request that is received by any API. So interoperability, like uh, the, every application may not be implemented using same programming language. There might be different programming languages. Every application have their own API. So how come they manage the communication between them? So that is interoperability. And which programming language we have to use to implement specific API and which framework. So all these things are very critical while implementing an API for any application. By keeping all those factors, our great architects provided a solution that is building REST APIs with JSON as a data format, which is added to the principles of RESTful architecture, broadly speaking, HTTP JSON. Following the RESTful architecture principles, many frameworks came up in different languages like Spring Boot in Java, Akka HTTP in Scala, and Flask in Python. All of these frameworks uses the JSON as a data exchange format for their messages. Everything was good, but microservices evolved a lot in recent years. There might be hundreds and thousands of microservices are creating in enterprises for different purposes. Obviously, data is growing. So marshalling and marshalling of data is taking too much time. Obviously, latency also increased while exchanging the data between microservices. Since passing the JSON is a hell of thing. It takes too much time. There are a lot of complications while using RESTful architecture. Is really JSON a fast data format? Obviously no. JSON is a text document, not binary. JSON is good for if the data size is very small. If it is huge, then obviously passing JSON document is a hell of thing. It takes too much time to parse the JSON document. Is RESTful architecture capable of building complex APIs? No. While implementing microservices, we need to consider a lot of factors like logging, tracing, and load balancing of requests. All these are very complicated. And also, finding service and service implementation is a time-consuming process. Definitely, RESTful architecture doesn't provide the capabilities to build microservices or RESTful APIs. So it's a very complex thing. And also it is possible to build bi-directional streaming APIs using RESTful architecture? No, because RESTful architecture uses the HTTP 1 protocol, which is not a bi-directional, but the next version of HTTP, that is a HTTP version 2.0, provides the capability of bi-directional streaming of data between applications. So is there any framework that can leverage the HTTP2 capabilities and can be used to build next generation modern APIs? Yes, that is gRPC. The gRPC framework developed by Google and it is open source. 
Google uses this framework for all their backend applications. It enables you to define request and response with remote procedure call, that is RPC, and handles rest of everything for you. Uses HTTP2 version so that it allows all HTTP semantics and HTTP2 capabilities as well, particularly bidirectional streaming of data. Supports full duplex streaming. As a result, client and server can stream the data asynchronously. By default, it uses protocol buffers as the interface definition language and also for data exchange format. Protocol buffers are not just data format. It can also use it for service interface definition. GRPC uses protobufs for both service and payload message definition. If you don't know what is protocol buffers, I have made a video recently. You can click on the link showing above so that you will get to know more about protocol buffers. Why GRPC? Why we have to use GRPC? There are a lot of other frameworks we can use to implement microservices. Why we need to choose GRPC? Because of its high performance and efficient way of developing microservices. And the application developed using GRPC framework that can run on any environment and it's pluggable support for load balancing, health, trace and authentication. And also the simple service definition with the protocol buffers. Protocol buffers a powerful binary serialization toolset and language and work across languages and platforms. You can use GRPC in many languages. It can generate client and server steps for your service in a variety of languages and platforms. Easy to scale. Install runtime and dev environments with a single line and also scale millions of RPCs, that is remote procedure call services per second with the framework. And it's a bi-directional streaming and fully integrated with pluggable authentication with HTTP2 based transport. What is remote procedure call? We came to know that gRPC uses remote procedure call concept. What is RPC? Is it a new concept? No, it's a very old concept. If you have worked on Java applications around 10 years back, you might have read about or worked on RMI, remote method invocation in Java. Of course, if you are a computer science graduate, you might have read about this in your Java book. Actually, it's a technique constructing distributed client server based applications and it is conventional local procedure calling so that call procedure no need to exist in the same address space as a calling procedure. The two processes may be on the same system or may be on the different systems, but with a network connecting both of them. For example, we can say like this. Let us assume that there is a two programs, client program and server program. And once the server is up and running, it might be waiting for the request from the client application. Once the client application comes up and it calls the procedure on the stub of the server, it looks like the client is making a call to the method locally, but the request will be passed to the server program via the network and meanwhile, the client will be waiting for the response from the server. So the server executes the procedure and sends the response back to the client. Client receives the response and does the rest of the process and, and might be it may send another request to the server. So the server will be waiting for the response request from the client. This is the basic concept of a remote procedure call, how it works. That's it guys. Hope you got the better understanding of what is gRPC and what is a remote procedure call. As part of this series, I want to make some more videos on uh, how we can implement microservices using gRPC framework. So as part of this, I'm going to make uh, some more videos. Those videos covers like uh, how to set up the gRPC environment uh, and for Java application using Maven and defining services using protocol buffers generating java steps for protobuf using java maven plugin and implementing grpc services in java and testing grpc services with a client application called a bloom rpc it's a standalone application i will show you how you can download and test the grpc services using this particular tool and also we can implement the grpc client application which will make a call to grpc server application and gets the response if you are interested in all these tutorials in upcoming videos stay tuned to this channel and if you haven't hit the subscribe button hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to get the updates of my future videos until then goodbye